up, everybody? It's day 205 making Songbringer. Um, if you don't know what Songbringer is, it's a Zelda like game. It's procedurally generated. Um, today I'm going to be making dialogue. So finally, finally, finally starting dialogue. Characters will be able to talk to each other, the player will be able to comment on things, and it's all going to be procedural too, so, well, not purely procedural, it's not like it generates the text that the characters say or anything, but it will be based on the surroundings, the actual environment, what has the player has uncovered, what is in this world and everything. What's up, Momir? Yo, man. So... Yeah, so the first thing I'll do, what's up, Arcane? Howdy, guys. Yeah, so the first thing I want to do is just get a little dialogue window going where it's actually just, you know, like a little black box above the player's head and some text. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's how I'll start it, I guess. Yeah, well, no, there's not going to be any voice acting. No. No, I don't have the funds for that. Or, I mean, I guess I could record my own voice or whatever, but, you know, it's... I, I, I don't know. I don't want to do that because there's, there's so much... Um, there's I think there's going to be so much procedural dialogue that it will be actually... It would be quite expensive to actually do the voice acting completely for this game. And secondly... It's, it's kind of um, in honor to all the rad old school games that I played as a kid where they only had text. You know, it's not like it, there was voice acting. So I'm not against voice acting. I think it's rad, but I just think it's beyond kind of the scope of this project. The, the resources I have as far as time and money. What's up, Skittle Fiddler? Yo, yo. Okay, well, um, oh, I have no idea where to throw this into the code. So I want all I want to do is a little black box to start with, and then some text above the player's head. And I kind of want it to move with the player, so if you move, it kind of moves the box as well. So you so you can, so you can have dialogue that doesn't interrupt your gameplay. Well, I guess it'll be part of the players and um it'll be part of the player's entity. So his sprite right above his sprite there'll be some dialogue. Okay, so where should I put this in the code? Which what should trigger there to be dialogue? Um, well, I guess for now I can hook it up to an item. So if I use an item, nice, cool. Well, I'm glad you like old written dialogues too. Yeah, I guess for now I'll hook it up to like the, like eating the cactus. Instead of eating a cactus, you'll like, you'll trigger some dialogue. Nice. Okay, let's do this. Well, that'll be in system when it's like um, use cactus or whatever. Use item cactus. Okay, cool. Let's do it here. Okay, so um, let's get the player's entity, and then, well, we already got the player's entity, that's E. Okay, we got that. So, well, let's do um, a black box to represent the dialogue. 
some dialog we want to say. Let's do that. String text. Let's have them say, ooh, pretty. Like he's looking at the waterfall. That'd be good too, yeah. I mean, there's gonna be tons of this. This is all gonna be procedural. So I'm actually gonna have to write it. Actually, I'll start it right now. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So in assets, let's do assets story. Or dialog. Either one of those is fine. Yeah, so here's kind of what I'm thinking like as far as the dialog goes. It's gonna have each one of these entities or whatever in a dialog is going to have some kind of um, each each one of the I read this whole thing on, on how to do procedural dialog with um it was by the guys at Valve. I forget who, where it was, whatever. But there's an awesome talk. It's a long, long talk. There's like a 150 page document they released about it. But um, it boiled down to some simple things, right? So like each bit of dialogue. Let's say the dialogue is, ooh, pretty. Um, I guess we would need um. We need the character that's actually doing this or saying this. So we'll just say, we'll put that as the key rock who says, ooh, pretty. Um, and each one of these things has a re like requirements. You know, like um, you have already said something else. Um, and then you can set things too once you're done. So, or you can also require that you have you have certain things already, like has sword or whatever. Has item sword. I don't know, whatever, something like that. And then it also you can set things like set has said something else or whatever. So basically, this is kind of the, the how the procedural dialogue will work. <laughs> Purdy, yeah. Dialogue tree? No, no, it's not going to be a dialogue tree. It's simpler. It's a, it's flat. I, I guess in, a, in essence, this is a dialogue tree um, because the way it works is like if you've said something else, you can have that requirement for something else, right? So I can write a tree by doing this, like. Requirements has said something else, you know? That's awesome. So yeah, I can create dialogue trees with this, but this is a simpler um, layout for how the dialogue will work. And just to make it, to make it also easy to localize. And also this thing can play music too. So like um, if you, let's say like if you have, if you have the sword, and you haven't played Like, if you haven't played, I don't know, music one or whatever, you're going to set has played music one, and then you play music, music one dot wave or whatever. 
dot mp3. So this is kind of how it all works, right? It's it's all based on these has things and the requirements. These are based on the, the state of the world. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Jackal Gamer, exactly. Yeah. Um, and there, man, let's see if I can find this talk. So if this is, if anybody's interested in what I'm talking about here and the, all the details behind it, there's um, Valve, I think they did it at GDC on procedural dialogue, something like that. Here it is. Awesome. This is like a big old PDF document, but this is one link. Yeah, here's one. Um, and then there's, I think it's, I think it might be this. This is kind of him talking about it. Um, no, there's like a, there's a page where it has, Oh, maybe it's just, this is it. AI driven dynamic dialogue. This, might, this is his actual talk, like he actually talks and stuff. Yeah, I think this is it too. Okay, but today's today's goal is not even to get into that. I just wanna, all I wanna have is um, a black box above the player's head and to have him say something. Okay, so black box. We need a black box first. That's going to be kit layer color. The parent is e.render.sprite. The color is going to be black. Z is 1. We'll set the pause of this thing. You see how tall the player is again? Exactly in pixels. So we need to be at least like there. That's 32 pixels. And we'll do a run, we'll run an action on the layer to automatically remove itself after a second. Huh, what's up, Big Mac Dev? Ah, surprise you. No. I haven't ever dyed my hair pink. Never gone to pink car camp at, over at Burning Man. Oh man, I wish I was at Burning Man. This is the first year I haven't gone to Burning Man in five years. So I'm kind of missing it. I know it feels right in a sense because I you know I, I just don't have the resources to go to Burning Man this year. But it also feels wrong because it's just such a special thing. Ooh, you're working on a Twitter bot. Oh, wow. Interesting, man. Yeah. Oh, man. I know what you... I, I've, I've seen a little bit of what that entails. Olaf. Hey, what's up, Alex Pita? What's up, man? I'm working on dialogue right now. Um, okay, let's get like a word count. We're gonna have to split this into words eventually, anyways, to do um, oh, 
to do um, to make each word appear and kind of in in time to animate each word. So we'll do a vector of string called words. We'll split. Yeah, totally right. And it's all gonna be ready for you too to um to translate into Italian with this thing. Dialogue.txt. So there's gonna be each one of these dialogues will be in here. And it'll be like these lines of text. There's only one line for each one of these that will that will actually have dialogue. All the rest can just be stay in English. So split text by spaces into words. There. Now we got a word count. So we can do words dot size times oh let's do let's do like a overly like a, way too much time at first right three seconds per word ought to be enough time for people to read so I want that to be pretty pretty long and then just after this it removes itself okay so now on top of this let's do This is the box, right? We might animate it opening up as well. But let's do some text as well. So, that actually is label. So, label equals kit label. We'll glitch it out too. So, parents can be layer, font file, k font. String, let's just start with text. Eventually this will be words. Um, position. Oh, up here we also want to, uh, I don't know if layers can actually set their anchor point. Hmm. We'll do, oh, oh. <laughs> we need to make sure this layer color is not huge. So layer color, float width, height, pause Z. So let's get a size to start with. Um, and I think it's, we want this to be, I don't know, maybe 80 pixels wide by, I don't know, 20 pixels high, let's just guess. Z is one. Oh, Nana, what's up, man? Hey, the finished dialogue, it's almost finished. But yeah, um, this is what it looks like so far. It's just, it looks almost exactly like it did yesterday. It's just that now it's totally flexible. So I can go and change the width of this whole thing procedurally, right? Some areas have wider, wider waterfalls. They can go all the way down to just one tile wide or it can go all the way up to seven tiles wide. Um, also this center of this pool can go down to about here or be all the way up to here. Um, all these walls now work so you can actually go here and you can go behind it here too and there's a secret back here. I won't say what it is. Um, and yeah and it works on other areas too so that's what it looks like so far. The one last thing I want to do to it visually is to add some ripples on the water. So there's right now there's no ripples, but I will. Oh, sorry, I just broke the build. Whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna add ripples as well. Yeah, Jacko Gamer, I'm going to be doing that. Yeah. What's up, Grim Gary? Yeah. So what I want to do is before I go and make it all perfect, right? I this I try and I try and keep every bit of code I write as minimal as possible so I can see something every time I write it, right? And so I can show you guys what the hell is going on too. So that's why I haven't gone and computed the width of the words and all that stuff yet. I want to just get this thing running as fast as possible. So that's kind of a, a look into my why I do things that way and stuff. Oh, pause. Back to... Um, 
I think this might need to have a width here, half a width, but let's try it without it at first. All right, um, okay, next thing is a pause for the label. Like to, I think we want this to be minus size dot width times a half and size dot height times a half. I don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yep, get it working. Then fancy it up, make it super awesome, make the size flexible. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, anchor point, back to anchor point for this. I think it'd be nice to actually put this all the way at the top. So go 0, 0.0 and 1.0 for its anchor. Z is one, glitch duration. I don't want it to glitch, but I do want it to randomly turn into the alien font so like every maybe 7.07 7, nah let's do every 3.333 f seconds loose label okay let's see what we got i want to see something so if, yeah if you just joined the stream i'm i'm making dialogue finally implementing dialogue in the game and um, there's several things I want to do to hook it up correctly into the game but for now I'm just totally um, starting with something really simple so what I'm doing is I'm making it so instead of using the item B I just whenever I press the item B it'll it'll do the dialogue oh there cool nice okay so we did need to do the text um, more to the right or whatever and size 80 was not even anywhere near big enough. Okay, so it's position here. Be nice if this thing faded out as well. So let's make do this. See that fade out. Create. Mono space. No, no. This is a custom font. I totally hand drew all this. Yeah, this is um, something I just drew, right? It's all pixel. So let's see that with it fading out and what, wait, hold on. This. Didn't it? Let's try a bigger size to start with. It's still totally wrong. 160. Okay, yeah, it's it's the right. Ah. Uh. We want the label glitch to fade out as well. Oh, you mean each each character has the same width? No, no, it's not that either. Yeah, each character has all its custom width. So, and I had to, first I had to render this out with a bitmap font generator, and then I had to go and customize each letter so it's like perfect, right? So I made the space eight, right? And the exclamation point has a width of five. 10, 10, all of them, all of them are totally custom to make sure they're, they look good. Okay, it appears that I'm, oh yeah, that makes sense. 
This is supposed to be zero here. I guess the label needs to fade out as well. So let's get a const duration. So we'll do the same thing with the label. It'll fade out really quick. Oh, and let's make it, um, let's do an ease sign out. With the fade, so it'll be all eased really cool. And then we don't need to remove self on. Yeah, it is, but thankfully, um, Coco Studio X already has that um, built in. So when you get, when you create a label, you can actually get its width. Um, I think it's just in its content size. It actually sets its content size to be the size of all its text. So yeah, that's pretty handy. And let's try and ease exponential out on the text fade. So see how that looks. We're probably going to need to add a little bit of buffer too, some padding around the text. Yeah. And it'd be nice to have it fade in as well. So let's start with by fading it in as well. So layer dot set opacity. Fade, uh, let's do an ease exponential in. Fade in. Uh, let's do fade two. We'll fade two over the course of phi ratio seconds and fade into like 200 or something. So we have a little bit of a transparent window. It'd be nice if this wasn't pure black. If this was something maybe brown. Maybe the brown of this of this guy's hat. Rock's hat. It's brownish. Put this really close to black. We got 14, 11, 6. And opacity is the last color element right there. Hey, what's up, Overcaster? What up, man? I'm working on dialogue here. So let's get a buffer width as well. Cons float. Uh, or margin. Margin is three pixels, maybe. And then when we do the position here, we want to do margin and size the height times one. We'll just do size the height minus margin. Cool, now we got a brown color, we got it fading into 200, we got it fading out. We also want to fade in the label, so ease exponential in. Let's fade this all the way though to 255. Okay, let's see what we got so far. Hmm. 
So what was it? Why is it? Why is it fading in? There's a lot of things that need to be touched up here. The offset from the player. Here we go. Let's make that more like forty. Size dot height didn't need its margin for some reason. It's like, oh, the label needs to have label dot set opacity zero. So it starts at zero. That's what's wrong with that. Uh, yeah, I haven't decided yet. I just I'm playing around with the brown color for now. I'm just kind of overall dialing in each little bit of everything and then I'm going to make it so flexible so it um, so it can read any line of dialogue and fit the width and all that and read each line at a time so the mark we need a little more margin on the left there something like five at least Dialogue options? Like what? What kind of dialogue option would you would you want? Like how fast it prints out or whatever? It's not centered. Why is it not centered? It's kind of weird. Box offset. Oh, uh, I guess. Oh, oh, the box offset X would need to be half the player's sprites width. So E dot render dot sprite dot get content size dot width times a half to start with. And then we're going to need to subtract half the size oh oh dot yes yeah sometimes there will be this yeah maybe I'm not exactly sure I haven't at first I wasn't planning on there being dialogue options right like you wouldn't be able to choose between different responses or whatever your character would just respond but I don't know that it's kind of interesting to, to do I don't I don't know that's a really good question Momir I need to I need to think about this a little bit more I think the opacity needs can come down a little bit too maybe like 180 Maybe all the way to even half. Let's try it all the way at just half opacity. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I guess it can even go more transparent. Let's go half that. This is all the way down to like less than 
Yeah, I liked it a little darker, actually. Let's do, let's do a blend of both those. 96 would be, oh, 99 maybe. And let's go ahead and try uh, adjusting the width. based on the label size. So layer dot set content, I hope it said content size. Let's see if we can even set this content size. Uh, yeah, maybe. Actually, no, I haven't. I hadn't thought about that. I had always kind of planned on there being a black box. It's a good thought, though. Very interesting. Oh, wow, it did work. Okay, all I need to do now is add on some margin to this thing. So, label I get content size. Whoops. Yeah, I guess I, I could try that. What's up, schizophrenic cat? Oh, it works, but now I need to adjust the actual position of it. So later I said content size, um, layer dot set position X to be, well, this is where we're going to need to do all this anyway. So set that to zero up there and then set position X to half the player's size minus size. Yeah. The same thing here. Oh yeah, and let's experiment without even having the box visible at all. So let's fade to zero. miss it. Let's see what it looked like with the box again. Can you fight pirates by offending them? I would think so. There's got to be some strategy where which works by offending a pirate. What's up, schizophrenic cat? Well, um, what frame rate does this game run at? It runs at 60, um, but that's only when I'm in release mode. I'm in debug mode right now, and I have to run the game at 30 frames a second because Open Broadcaster is a resource whore. Steals so much of my CPU and stuff like and my GPU especially. So I can't run the game at 60 frames a second without it really slowing things down um, when I'm streaming, right? So if I'm not streaming, I can run at 60 frames a second. That's why I've got release mode set to 60, debug mode set to 30. Um, and how does it affect the game frame, game's frame rate? Uh, it doesn't. And 
if you write your game with your tick correct, you never have to worry about that. And let me show you an article about that. Um, it's called Fix Your Time Step by Gaffron Games. And this is this is basic stuff that you should know as a game developer. Not basic stuff. This is more of an this is like almost an advanced topic for for game ticks. I don't know why most people really haven't ever seen this, but this is a very this is a very important I'm trying to say it's an important thing to fix your time step. This works for any type of game. What this will do is make sure your game runs at exactly the same speed no matter what frame rate you're running at. And cuz you have to do that because especially cross-platform games, because you never really can guarantee that your game is going to run at 60 frames a second. Sometimes it's going to run a little less. And in fact, on way old devices, like let's say I, I tried to run my game on an iPhone 3GS or something like that, some ancient iPhone, it would probably run at like, you know, maximum 20 frames a second. So you want to make sure you fixed your time step. And this is a great article about how to do that. What's up, Vlad? Howdy, dude. I'm working on dialogue and I'm just about ready to try. Let's try a, a new line. So let's see what this looks like when we've got two lines of dialogue. Oh, and next I'll make it so it does each each line one at a time. Okay, so we've got a problem there with oh, because it's Yeah, because it needs to position it. Oh, the waterfall ended up great. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Mike? Yeah, the waterfall is awesome. Um there's one thing left I have to do and that's to create ripples. So I want to create some ripples there in the bottom of the waterfall that are pushing outward from where the water lands. But um, yeah, everything's done. So I've got I've got all the rocks set up so I can walk, you know, and not walk on stuff. Um, walk behind the waterfall. There is a secret back there. I'm not going to say what it is or go get it or whatever. Um, there's the secrets are procedural. So some of the waterfalls have secrets. Some of them don't. The waterfalls are completely procedural actually. So they're they can be one tile wide. They can be all the way up to seven tiles wide. They can go all these different sizes in between. Um, the actual pool here can go down a little bit or up a little bit, depending on the size of the the screen. Um, some of the some of the waterfalls you can't walk all the way back behind if the area doesn't have that path. So it's all it's all good, man. It's all hooked up into the game, all proper. So it's ready to release that at least. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, it's it's ready for the game. It's totally ready for all procedural worlds. I guess I could just improve the art even more if I want to at this point. So, okay, next thing, let's make it so the text um, is anchored to the bottom. Yeah, we might as well anchor it to the bottom so it just... Then we don't have to worry about it when we change the size of the, the box. How's your day going, Vlad? So, looks like we need some more margin. We at least need margin on the bottom. We might need two times the margin. Yay, cool. Render groups and layers, very nice. Right on. Did you try and reach out and try and find any artists or anything yet? What 
Looks like I need two times the margin on the bottom. What's null pointer? Null pointer is um, zero essentially, but it's a it's a strongly cast to a pointer. So um, I can't do this like int i equals null pointer. Well, I guess I could, but that's or yeah. See that that gives me an error because this. This is an integer i, null pointer is, is strictly a pointer, right? So I can't compare these. I can't assign these. So that that really, really helps you out as you, as you use null pointer more and more in your code. You can distinguish between zero and null pointer, right? Int j equals zero, that's fine. This is wrong. So this is this this creates really, really awesomeness everywhere you so Basically, you should never ever use null anymore. This is old old school C plus plus, and um, and C C still uses this. So like int i equals null that works. See that because null is essentially just cast a zero. Oh weird man. Ah. Oh. Yeah, it's the strict version of null. And it's very, very helpful to use it. It's, it came about in C++ 11. And um, yeah, I think it's one of the most important things in C++ 11 is that. And also auto is very, very important. Okay, so let's try margin times two on the bottom. And then we'll get each word to appear animated. Well, oh, that's too much. So let's, yeah, let's just trust that that's about right. And let's start making it so it animates all the words. So. So we're running an action that does the dialogue. Oh, wow. Dude, you got a lot going on. Crazy. So the first thing we want to do with the dialogue action is turn the labels string all the way off so it has no text. And then we'll run an action which um, procedure it calls itself back a few times and adds more and more words to the dialogue. Wow, 3D vector field visualization on 3D models and surfaces. Very interesting, man. What are my plans for the stream after I finish the game? Um, well, that's going to be a whole two years from now, right? Because I'm going to keep on streaming after I... I'm releasing the game in January, right? So that's like, that'll be the Steam release. But then I've got several other releases to do and lots of content to keep on adding. So even though this game is coming out on Steam in January or February or March, um, it's I'm gonna keep making it better and better and better for a whole year and porting it to other platforms. So iOS is coming out, um, Retro VGS is one of them, maybe Android. Um, and possibly Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So all of those are going to take a lot of time, probably a whole year. And then also I can keep making the game better and better and better and adding more visual content and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to keep streaming through that whole process. And then hopefully this is all um, assuming the game does financially well. Because if the game doesn't do financially well commercially or whatever, I won't have the funds to keep doing this and I'll have to get a job and so that process will kind of be slower but um, 
but I'll still, even if I had a job, I would still keep making this game awesome, as awesome as I could, because it's kind of like, I don't know, I love it. I love this game so much, and I can't wait to play it really awesome myself. Uh, Mike, yes, C++ runs on iOS. Um, yes, it's true that Objective-C is required a little bit to get Think App started, but you don't need it completely. Once you've got the basics set up, see, this is how Cocos 2DX works. You've got iOS, Windows, Mac. All of these have different setup code, right? So the app controller has its own Objective-C code for getting the window set up. But once you've got the window set up, you can actually call C++ after that. C++ is one of the most portable game development languages out there. In fact, it is. I'm going to go ahead and say it. It is the most portable game language of pretty much them all. C and C++. Because there's so many different compilers. Almost every single platform supports C or C++. So you can compile C++ on Windows Phone now. You can compile it on Android. So Android has its own SDK thing too. I should have my Android folder in here as well. Let's actually just drop that in because that's a pretty important thing to just have around. It's nice to be able to edit my whole project inside this one Xcode project. What's up, Arctic? Oh, now I want that Android. No, don't create an external build system project. Create a group. Don't add it to any of my targets. There. So now I got my Android folder too. So yeah, Android has its own Java stuff. So Android, you've got um, your own main.cpp. Um, but this is all called through the Android. It's called it's what's called the Android NDK. You can use the NDK. It's called the Native Development Kit or something like that. And that allows you to call C++ on Android as well. So same thing with Android, though. you got to have a tiny bit of Java code. And that's in my source or Cocos 2DX, CPP, app, blah, 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 Java. So this is the basic stuff on Android, which gets your Java code created. And after you've created this tiny bit of Java code, everything else is C++. So that's kind of how you use C++ on any platform. Everything has its own... You can still compile it. You just have to figure out how to run it. Yes, it does. Yeah, Momir. Objective-C, you have to type yes, capital yes, and capital no for their Booleans. It's just the way they do it. It's kind of crazy, right? Yeah. What's up, Speedy Flip? Welcome to the stream. Okay, um, back to creating this dialogue. Um, oh yeah, I want to do each word appearing in time. So I want to do a repeat action. Repeat. Create. So we're going to call... Oh no, we need, it. we need a sequence to do this. Yes, Arctic Raj, they're going to be uh, all localized, right? So um, I've already got localization set up for the game. And it's just as simple as, you know, putting things underneath a root. Like, this is my English language stuff. And so, um, yeah, it'll all be lo ready for localization. And it'll be localized at the very start. When a game is released, at first it'll be on in Italian and English. And I think I'm going to translate it into Spanish myself and have a friend check them over my work or whatever. But, yeah, so Spanish, English, and Italian at first. And then maybe some other platforms, too. I mean, other languages, right? There's actually a lot of benefits. It is, it is kind of weird and, re oh my gosh, yeah. You could, you could see it as being ugly at first, but once you get into it, actually Objective-C is very cool um, because everything is so um, readable. So check this out. Every time I pass in a parameter, this is, this is like, a method call right here. See that? I'm I'm passing in pixel format, this. Depth format, that. Preserve back buffer, no. So what's so great about Objective-C is that you have to specify each one of these parameter names. Yes, it's wordy, but it makes it so much more readable. Because in C++, this, this would be like this. Like you'd call 
uh, something view with frame. And then you would call format RGB A8. And then you would call no, um, zero, yes, nil, whatever. All these things, you have no clue what the hell these mean anymore. After you type this in, this is kind of one of the, the worst drawbacks of C++, right? Is that once you pass up, set up these parameters, it's you can't really remember. It's not readable at a glance what the hell those parameters were. What the heck does this zero represent? I have no idea. So it's kind of a big drawback to C++. And that's this is one. This is the beauty of of Objective C is that you can do is this this very simple basic thing. You have to specify your, your parameters like that. Netherlands, um, heck yeah. We'll find somebody to translate it into Dutch. Is this, is this Netherlands, right? Or is this German? Yes, I do need a German translator. Yes. Ah, what's a BAP? Oh, it's Dutch. Nice. What's up, man? Are you Dutch? I didn't know you're Dutch. And if you if you are Dutch, do you reside currently in the Netherlands? Oh, actually, we just need we need a repeat. Oh, it's the SAP programming language. Oh, nice. Right on. Oh, it's based on COBOL? Oh, we had to learn that in college. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Nice. I learned something new about you today. Cool. Right on. Um, what's, what, what, what Dutch do I know? I know Narkin in the Karkin. Uh, that's, uh, that's all I know. Narkin in the Karkin. Um, I spend a little bit of time there. I should know more words. It's like the one the one thing I know how to say is narkin in the karkin. Or is that is that Danish? I hope that's I think that's Dutch, right? Okay, let's do the schedule. This will do it. This will work. Schedule. Yeah. Interval repeat there. So yeah, we'll do a callback function. Yes, 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 I, I did it right. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, this is how you write it? Oh, I never knew how to spell it. Uh, that's great. I learned that while I was backpacking many years ago. Okay, so let's create a little lambda function that takes a float that we're going to completely ignore. And then every time it calls us back, we're going to fade in a new word. So in the interval, let's do the delay per word. Const float delay per equals like three seconds. Delay per. So the interval for calling this label schedule thing is delay per. And the repeat count is words dot size. And the delay Word dot size delay before calling this. Oh, that might, that might need to do. Um, how did that come up? Because lighter thieves, lighter thief is Dutch. It's really is that what it is? <laughs> oh, it's funny. Oh yeah, so this is zero to start with, and then the key. Um, this is, fade in text. Okay, so now we got it set up. Hey, what's up, Annette? Hey, Noah? I'm great, man. How are you doing?
Okay, so I'm just running this again because I just want to make sure I didn't break anything. Um, but I haven't actually implemented it yet. So what I'm doing next is I'm making it so each one of the words in the dialog here is going to come in at one after the other, right? So for now, that needs more margin now. Let's do a margin of seven. Or maybe we just need to do a vector margin. Cool. Conspect to margin. Um, and then margin.x, margin.y. Just margin actually. Margin. See that. Okay, so now we can adjust the actual x margin versus the y margin. Um, so yeah, and then next I'm making it so each one of the words phase itself in over time. So like animates, right? So it's weird, but I think this the label's position. It's like it needs a little bump on the on the on the Y. I have no idea why, but two pixels seems to do it. Okay, now let's get these to fade in. So, uh, first I'm gonna go and set every single character in the dialog to be invisible. So, um, I know there's a function to get each, um, to get each letter of the dialog. So this is, this is a label entity or node, it's a label node, and you can get each letter. So I'm just looking through the Coco CDX documentation for that. But here's the number of lines, here's the string length. Oh, you can get the width and height, that's cool. Oh, there it is, get letter. So you can get the sprite for each, each letter is a sprite, and you can get um, each letter's index. So we want to go for each letter. In I equals zero, I is less than label dot get, what was it, get letter? No, get string. Length, get string length, I plus plus, and now let's hide each letter. So, get letter I if S label dot set opacity. Oh my god, we don't even need to do it this way. We can do this all within one little loop here, actually. So we can count the word, right? So if um word index equals zero, and we can go if this thing's well, we already know the text. So if text I is white space, I think I wrote this, this function. Did I not? I thought there was a white space method in kit. White space. Well, I guess not. Damn.
So if it's a space or new line, then it's then we've got a new word. So we'll go word index plus plus. Right? So each one we set zero and then we run an action. It fades it in. So run action. Um, we're going to do sequence, create, so we'll delay some time, and that is going to be delay per times word index, and then we fade in ease x, mm, ease sign, you sign in, create, um, and then fade in. Duration. Oh, let's do the fade in duration. Oh, we'll just do. We'll just do zero. We use a magic number. Oh, bad, bad, but whatever. There. That's what I was thinking. Okay, we don't need to worry about this. We can just go text.size. Why isn't it like that? I already have a local variable called i. Oh, I do. J, 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 J. And I think, actually this is, mm, yeah, we'll just do that. Boom, see if it works. I just wanna see each letter come in, or each word fade itself in over time. Oh man, didn't work. Wait, did it? Oh, that was weird. Okay, so if this action didn't even run, it should have said everything to, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. This thing, the label already has its own overall action. Yeah, we don't want this to run. That was probably it. In fact, we don't need that either. Let's see if this works now. Okay, that's like way too slow, but I got another thought here too. This needs to be three pixels, not two pixels. Um, and yeah, we need like an in delay per and an out delay per. So this is like the fade in delay per letter, and then this is the fade out delay per letter. And this is, needs to be words.size. Oh, actually, yeah, that's fine. Leave that like that. Out delay per. This is now going to be in delay per. So we have a quicker fade in for each one of these words. So an in delay per, we're talking like 
really fast. I want to see this. I want to see all this text come up really fast. I don't. I don't like the. I don't like the old school games where you have to wait forever for your dialogue to appear. Even that was a bit too slow. So let's do an in delay per. Let's try half that to start. And man, why is it that this black box seems too, too opaque now? Let's try that a little, little less opaque. They also need to fade out. And it needs a slight delay, overall delay. So let's do let's do word index plus one actually. For starting. And then Let's set a variable for this delay so we can go delay time, fade in, delay time, the overall duration minus this delay. minus a half a second and then fade out so ease exponential out create fade to there so hopefully that kind of fades out each each letter I could, make, I could do each word to start and then each letter on the out. That'd be cool. Hmm. Oh, it didn't work. Or did them all? It did them all at the same time. It wasn't supposed to do that. Delayed. Oh. I think it's just supposed to be delay times two. And two seconds per word is kind of still a lot, so. Oh, cool.
So instead of that, though, I want to go do delay in, delay out. So total number of words. Minus the word index on the delay out. Yeah, yeah, I'm flipping that around now. So I'm doing a delay in and delay out. So, so this is going to be minus delay in, minus delay out. I think that ought to flip it around so that the, the last, the, that last word fades out last. And also, I want this to wait. Like the, the fade in duration. So first the, the box fades in and then the letters fade in. So let's see if that all comes together to look a little bit better. Yeah. Let's call this box fade duration, use it for both the in and the out. And I want this to fade in quicker. So let's do 309. And I also want the in delay to be quicker. And this is more accurately should be duration per. Or word duration. Okay, so yeah, hopefully this makes it look a little snappier, faster. Sweet, I like it. And this also needs a um, box fade. Oh, delay out. Yeah, box fade duration. Oh, I guess this could be plus. This should be plus. And let's see if we got to get even faster fade on the boxes, if that, how that looks. And maybe even more opacity, or more transparency.
Yeah, I want that to fade in even faster per word. Nice, this is starting to look good. I think I want the font though to be this other font I have. Uh, it's, it's I think it's called Font Shadowless. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know Spanish from school and from travels a little bit. It's not like I'm awesome at it, but I think I could, I could figure out how to, how to write Spanish and then have a friend check it. Yeah, that's better. Without that black outline, the text looks way cooler. Yeah, I like that. Let's do a little more margin X. Actually, let's set the margin Y down. Hmm. That was a little too much, I think. Yeah, yeah, Mike, I made the font myself in Photoshop. I just pixeled it out. Interesting. Yeah, so here's the font. Um, yeah, I just drew this as pixeled it all. And then I also pixeled the alien font to, to go with it. So you can see it glitches into this alien font. You can't read it right, but it is actually the English alphabet or whatever. Okay, I got a crazy idea. I wonder what it would look like if the text had an additive blend funk. Uh, no, Photoshop cannot export font files. So, um, I had to, what I did is I created it with this, this program called BM Glyph. I think I got this application for like five bucks or whatever. And so I exported, I created a font with BM Glyph first, right? And then I exported it and I made sure that all of the characters were like all in a row. There's some kind of option so I could get everything in a row. So it was A, B, C, D, E. It was all like linear, right? And then I just this exports a ping file and then a font file which is like this like all these like different x offsets and y offsets for each character and then so there's just the ping file right it's like like this you can't really see it because it's all transparent and, and then white letters uh this one shows it better actually so yeah there's the ping file and then the font file that the text file that loads it so i created it first in this right and then in photoshop i went and drew a redo redrew the texture based on where those letters were i just redrew it so that's how i did that so no i wish i wish photoshop could export font files but no you need a special tool for that so let's see what that looks like with additive light 
on the letters. I don't know, this might make it really difficult to read. We'll see. Oh, it actually looks all right. Hmm. Let's change up what he's saying here. White. Oh, I guess it's because it's white. And then it's additive. That's why it's still white when it adds the white to the whatever else is there. So I need to adjust the, the spacing of this lowercase font. This would look a lot better with its uppercase font. Now he's yelling. And so I think what would happen is if I faded into something else and did this additive light, it might, now it might look like it has some color. Ah, it didn't end up looking like very colorful at all. Okay, what if we didn't have the background? What would that look like? Or there's no box. I, want, I just want to try adding a little bit of color to the text. Maybe I'll actually just color the text something slightly. Like just some slightly brownish tint to go with that. that the window of the dialogue. That's kind of cool. Gotta admit. But no, I don't think this additive is working. I'll try color though. So here's the color I'm, I've been using for this brown. If I go all the way up to here and then saturate it really, really low very little, maybe 13% like that. We got a color of 255. Ooh, I'm not going to do this anymore. I got a way better way to do this. S set color. Actually, we can just go text color. See what that looks like. So that's going to complement, well, not complement, but that's going to be the exact same as monochromatic for the um, for the dialog box and the text color. Hopefully, it doesn't look too brown or too orange. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, great idea, Momir. Nice. Yeah, right on, multi-layer render done. Sweet, man. Good call, Momir. I really like this a lot. So if it were jib talking, we could do a different color. Yeah, rad idea. 
I'm thinking, though, that this should be a little less saturated, like barely, maybe 10 there. Yeah, we need a screenshot. Screenshot, screenshot. Love it. Oh, same thing with the box color, I guess. Oh. Nice. Ooh, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, that would. That's easy enough, too. This is Alright, well, what else can I do right now? I guess I could get I could get Jib to say something too. But no, I kinda want that to be hooked up into the whole system. I think this is about it for today. For today's video, today's stream. It's a really good start though to have all this dialogue going. I like it. Yeah, so I'll have some, once I get the whole procedural system going, I'll be able to have the player actually trigger this based on him first coming to a waterfall, right? So he'll come to this waterfall screen and then he'll go, oh, and he says that. And then Jib will say something in reply. Jib will be like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and say his stuff. Exactly, he'll be like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. He does that already. He complains when you go idle, so... Otherwise, I'll make him say something when you're idle, right? Alright, well, I guess that's it for today's video. Um, Yeah. I'm totally happy with what I got done today. Um, and tonight, I'll work on it some more, and I'll actually get into the actual procedural part of it all. So this is going to be, it's going to look something like this. And um, did I post, did I already close my window? Oh yeah, I already closed the window. But um, if anybody's interested in, in uh, reading up on how to do procedural dialogue, um, uh, there's a talk by Valve. Here's the link. So yeah, this is the kind of what I based. I'm kind of basing this system off of. Is this? I read this whole thing. This is a long. It's a long talk, a long dialogue to read, but it's simple in its heart, right? And basically, each bit of dialogue will have a requirement for th things. It's the state of the world. So that, this is what's cool about this is based on how you've interacted with your world and the items you've acquired already that's how the dialogue can change and grow and kind of so i can I'll basically i'll write a lot of dialogue for the game and it'll all be based on the state of the world so as a player you're gonna you're going to come across maybe 
you know, 60% of the dialogue when you play the game or something like that. So each time you play the game, it kind of feels like you're, it's a little bit different in the, the story because, you know, some worlds are going to have certain entities that, ha that trigger certain dialogue and some worlds are not going to have those entities. So, um, so this is going to turn into a cool system and, um, and it's all going to be text based too. So I can translate this and localize it all. Yeah. So there's that link too, if anybody's interested in checking that out, how, how to do your own kind of system like that. So, um, yeah, that's it for today's stream. And, um, yeah, I had a good time. I appreciate you all. And I'll be back tomorrow. Same stream time, same stream guy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we'll see you guys.